Back in 1954, a group of bikers came together in Detroit and formed the Highwaymen Motorcycle Club. After that, they were like a tight-knit family, riding the highways and living life on their terms. Living their life to the fullest. One of the founding members, Elburn Big Max Barnes, played a big role in shaping the club's early days. Now here's where things get interesting. In the 1970s, there was this thing called the Detroit Federation of Motorcycle Clubs. It was created to settle disputes between different biker gangs and keep the peace. But guess what? The highwaymen were not invited to the party. They were banned from the Federation, which made people wonder what they were up to. The Highwaymen, you see, is no ordinary motorcycle club. They proudly wear the label of being a one percenter outlaw club, and man have they had their fair share of run-ins with the law. The police and the FBI have had their eyes on them. They launched investigations in 1973, 1987, and 2007. These guys don't shy away from making headlines. Just imagine their boldness. Now, when it comes to numbers, they're the biggest motorcycle club in the Detroit area, boasting a whopping membership of over 400. And they don't stop there. They've got chapters spread across states like Alabama, Florida, Indiana, Kentucky, Missouri, Ohio, and Tennessee. They're a force to be reckoned with. Furthermore, their insignia is a winged skeleton sporting a motorcycle cap and a leather jacket. Their colors are black and silver, representing their rebellious spirit. And they've got a motto that goes, Yeah, we ride through the highways in the shadow of death, we fear no evil, and we are the evilest motherfuckers on the highway. They sure know how to make a statement. But here's the twist, the highwaymen don't play by everyone else's rules. They're banned from the Detroit Federation of Motorcycle Clubs. You know, the one that was supposed to bring peace and resolve turf wars among biker gangs. The highwaymen march to the beat of their own drum, carving their path in the biker world. And get this, in the days of 1955, they were considered an American Motorcyclist Association AMA, authorized club. They had a taste of mainstream respectability, but over time, they embraced their outlaw status, just as much as the AMA rejected them. They became the personification of what it means to be a true one percenter. On May 5, 2007, things took a serious turn for the Detroit Motorcycle Club. The Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI, swooped in and arrested a whopping 40 members and associates of the club. And let me tell you, the list of charges against them was no joke. These guys were accused of everything from racketeering and murder for hire to assault. The other numerous illegal activities included police corruption, cocaine trafficking, vehicle theft, and even loan and insurance fraud. You know, it was a laundry list of serious offenses. But it didn't end there. Moreover, when the FBI raided their homes and the club's clubhouse, they made quite a discovery. They found an astounding 29 illegal firearms, including assault rifles, shotguns, and handguns. It was like something out of a movie. This two-year investigation into the club was no small feat. Wiretaps were used, and they had two informants working with them, one of whom tragically lost their life. The other informant, James Wallace III, played a crucial role in the case. Indeed, the devil's in the details. But wait, there's more. A high-ranking member of the Highwaymen, Randall Lee McDaniel, found himself in hot water too. On June 13, 2007, he was arrested for running a chop shop in Lansing, Michigan. The Monroe County Auto Theft Enforcement had been on his case since October 2006. They gathered his information and served search warrants on his properties. And if you thought things couldn't get any crazier, get this. Four police officers and a member of the Highwaymen were accused on March 12, 2008 by a federal grand jury in Detroit. This was all part of the ongoing investigation into drug trafficking. And as for those corrupt police officers, they too found themselves on the wrong side of the law. Guys, you won't believe the number of outlaw biker gangs operating in the United States. Law enforcement estimates that there are over 300 of these groups, and Michigan has its fair share. Indeed, it is a big number. As you know, the Waco shooting involved some of these gangs. Lately, another group named Macomb County-based Devil's Disciples has been making headlines. They were just convicted of some serious crimes like racketeering, narcotics production, and acts of violence. Now the government is treating these motorcycle gangs as they would any other organized crime group. But Corbet says there's something different about criminals on two wheels. They don't care about the long-term consequences. It's all about the here and now. It's a dangerous game. Guys, it was such a notable day in Detroit as the trial of the Phantom Outlaw Motorcycle Club leaders and members reached its conclusion. The verdict? Guilty. The evidence presented during the trial shed light on the activities of the Phantom Outlaw Motorcycle Club, headquartered in northwest Detroit, with chapters spread across several states. Their criminal endeavors included conspiracy to commit different illegal actions. It included murder, shootings, robbery, extortion, and the possession and sale of stolen vehicles and motorcycles. 
What made this case even more intriguing was the deep connection between the Phantom Outlaws and the Vice Lords Street Gang. The national president of the Phantoms, Johnson, held the position of the three-star general over the Vice Lords in Michigan. This linkage of motorcycle gangs and street gang activities demonstrated a complex network of criminal collaboration. In all the scenarios, Johnson blamed the Hell's Lovers Outlaw Motorcycle Club for the killing of a Phantom Outlaws member. In revenge, he ordered a three-phase murder plan. The first phase involved murdering at least three Hell's Lovers members in Detroit. The second phase aimed to eliminate all Hell's Lovers present at their Detroit clubhouse following the funeral, while the third phase targeted Hell's Lovers in other cities where the Phantoms had chapters. Thankfully, the mass murder plot was dissatisfied by the ATF and FBI search warrants executed in October 2013. Evidence shows that the Phantoms were actively preparing for the first phase, stockpiling firearms, conducting surveillance, and assigning members to carry out the attacks. Johnson, along with Nicholson, Sorrell, Brown, and Jackson, were all convicted in connection with the murder plot, a whole web of crime weaving in the heart of Detroit. Notably, during the execution of a search warrant at Nicholson's residence, he opened fire on ATF agents. Miraculously, the bullet struck a wall, preventing harm to the agents. The firearm used by Nicholson was registered to Schumanti. Sentencing hearings will take place on a later date. Whereas these convictions are a significant result of the joint efforts under the Detroit One Initiative, while the Comprehensive Violence Reduction Partnership Task Force, comprising ATF, Detroit Police Department, Michigan State Police, Michigan Department of Corrections, and the FBI, worked tirelessly to identify and apprehend those responsible for instigating violence in the city. It's like a constant power struggle. As this chapter closes, it serves as a reminder of the dark and dangerous world of outlaw motorcycle gangs and their connection to other criminal networks. The successful prosecution of the Phantom Outlaw Motorcycle Club leaders and members brings a measure of justice to the victims. Also, they send a strong message that such violent reigns will not be tolerated. They all left a mark on the history of outlaw motorcycle clubs. Thanks for watching the entire video. Don't forget to hit that like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos.